to the best of their ability like yeah. we are right trying to make doing everything you know, a little slower yeah slower. which i like trying I to enjoy like and appreciate all the little things which <laughs> is you know kind of make the lemonade out of the lemons right well you know what's interesting do you feel that time is going slower no For me, i feel like is. time is going by so <laughs> the, but fast. that's because harvest is coming fast approaching <laughs> <laughs> Normally, you know, there's all the, like, there's a music festival and there's a camping trip and I usually go on, right. and travel for a couple, get a two-week vacation. Like, it's been busy and I feel like I cannot believe it is the end of July. It's just, it's right. unbelievable. And well, Harvest really is right around the corner. It's early right? this year, right? Well, it's early. Yeah, it's coming a little on, early. A little earlier based on the last few years. It's going to be, like, closer to, like, what considered normal. Um, but it's happening. I would say we'll, we'll have fruit in within a month. We'll, we'll have fruit in maybe in three weeks. Well, yeah, and like I was amazed. Ball. Yeah, we have so much red going. Oh, I know. Sorry. I know. I'm no, just I'm looking around. I, I see red popping up in the vineyard. Sorry, if there's going to be an earlier year, yeah. I think this would be an ideal earlier year, honestly. Yeah. Just you want to kind of, bring this out? Well, while we're, while while you're, we, while you're earlier I'm year. I'm going to have a quick sip of Sauvignon Blanc because I can. Um, yeah. We went right outside and... Um, Right behind this wall, we have a Malbec Vineyard. Right, which is happens to be what we'll be yeah. drinking soon or tasting soon. So, actually, they're much more red than this. There's some I of them, I picked this yeah. one on purpose because you could really still see some of the green and the light reddish color, and then it jumps to the dark purple. Right, so for those of you out there that are not aware... And then with the um, Malbec leaves, so you can see how big, big they are. Big, and that's a giant. big bunch. And those size. berries will turn out to be, they will be much bigger. Yeah, they're going to be huge. But all grapes, white and red... Um, start off as little white <laughs> grapes. They're all green, start off small, and this process is called verasion. I mean, it's the process of a, really the changing of color. Verasion happens also in white wines, and it's basically become mature and it becomes softer. Right, it starts, it starts this green, like very, right. very like apple green, like a yeah. Granny Smith apple. Yes, maybe not even that delicious early no, on. It does, yeah. No, 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 but the color, I meant the yes. color. Absolutely, and really, really small. And mm -hmm. these berries, and then when it's be, white, then it gets more like a yellow color, right? It's not um, really for the, white for the white varietal. Yes, white becomes varietals. more of a depending on yeah, so more greenish to yellow, and then the red varietals will turn various colors of red purple. So some of them are much darker, petit verdot, super dark, um, pinot, not as dark, lighter colored. Right. But these berries will double in size by the time they're mature. So they right now they're super small. They're just in the process of converting from a, you know, from a green to a red in that Verasian process. And then they're going to start developing and they'll become much bigger and sweeter and much more delicious. So, so when... these are just baby Malbec. <laughs> baby Malbec, I You like will that. be delicious one of these days. Malbec is like so good to eat yeah. because it feels kind of like you're eating a table grape. Like a small yeah, table grape. Yeah, they are. Because they're big. Yes, you because it has a lot of juice in them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. And they all have seeds and they are good. And should we talk about, well, we were going to ask a question. Was it going to be like, when do I think Malbec? Yeah, that was going to be my question. How I'm did like, you know? Because oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I know. I mean, I spent enough time together. Um, it's like we're dating. Like, today. But you know, like, you're like, oh, I know. I spent enough time. I'm joking. But like, it's a relationship. I, I can read her mind a little bit. Like, what is she thinking? Um, so 
I don't know. I mean, like Malbec, the Malbec that we have here in Rutherford, which is where we are right now, um, tends to come in late September, early October. And I think this year in my magic crystal ball, I'm like, I'm guesstimating probably very end of September, which probably would be. Yeah, that's right. I'm thinking. Yeah, that sounds like the I'd normal, actually, right? Yeah, well, I mean, because sometimes it can most a lot of times a lot of the reds were busiest typically in the month of October. Um, but I'm hoping that this year, again, just based on look, watching, looking at trends and where things are kind of going, um, I could see us being done maybe third week of October, which I sometimes pick and have fruit coming in the first week of November. So this will be actually great. I'm looking, it's nice to have an earlier. I like how, like in the wine world, I get it because I've been around it so long, but that the fact that you, if you're done with picking the third week of October versus the first week of November, how is that that far apart? Oh, it's so different. But it's so different. <laughs> It, like, goes from, like, fall to winter, like, overnight it does. for some reason. <laughs> yeah, and then all of a sudden, like, the, by Thanksgiving, it's, like, beautiful yeah. again. Maybe rain, you know, so it's... Uh, yeah, so Napa's, then, Napa's amazing because it's always... November is, like, two weeks of, like, perfect weather and two weeks of kind of, like, hit or miss, rain and not so great. And then you're going... Those perfect two weeks when you come, you're like, I want to move to Napa. This is the best place ever. <laughs> well, it kind of is. <laughs> Kind of is. There's very few places. I know. Well, that because are... the leaves are changing in the thing. So, anyway. Yeah, we get a little bit of it. fall. <laughs> in Napa, we get fall. For those of you who live on the East Coast, we, um, on the West Coast, don't really get to, you know, don't get to. We don't get an East Coast fall. It doesn't no, but, get as cold. But we get but... fall. We get the change of colors mm -hmm. um, through the vineyard. So the colors are green, and then eventually they'll turn yellow. Some varietals, like Zinfandel, turn red. We do get a lot of the, that kind of color change, which is unusual for this part of the country. So we're kind of very lucky yeah. here that we get a little sense of Absolutely. a little sense of fall. One of these days, <laughs> when I retire, which will be many, many years from now, maybe not that many, but um, I don't, don't would really, <laughs> really love to go to the East Coast for fall because I've never experienced I've always that. wanted to do that. I've been, yeah, my entire life I've been making wine and well, making wine or studying wine, and I've never been able to be on the East Coast for the fall, and so that is right. on a bucket list. So when I retire, I'm going to go spend a few weeks or maybe even a month on the East Coast and enjoy <laughs> fall. Oh, good. Well, yeah. We should taste some wine while we're yeah. talking because I'm sure everyone is drinking some wine. I yeah. hope. Well, um, we should start with like that them? one. This and, is... of course, we love questions, so please don't oh, feel no. shy if you have a question or you no, know, just want, you want to hear something that has nothing related to do with these wines, that's okay, too. Yeah, no, we'd like to, <laughs> we would prefer to make it interactive, and we love having people ask questions, any questions. I mean, pretty much any. Yeah. We'd like, it's more fun for us. Um, hopefully, it makes it fun for you. We don't want to be boring up here, and we hope that we're, you know, we're trying to entertain ourselves. Well, the more I drink, the less boring I get. At least I think that's yeah, the case. Yeah, that's how you That might not be that. true. <laughs> so this wine is the making of a vineyard. Um, I don't, for those of you who have photo of it, it's basically actually you should describe oh, the photo because I should this is your family. Which one is? Oh, the making of the vineyard. Uh -huh. Oh, so this is part of our nostalgia series, which is only available to the wine club. So you must be part of our wine club to be able to get this wine. So, um, but the photo for those of you that have it, but I'll bring it really close just in case. Um, it is a picture of my dad, very small, sitting there next to the giant red barn and this is our new Persephone property that um, where a lot of our wines come from and, and the most amazing part is you know the f oh look it says 1996 it even has a year so I can cheat that is the year we purchased the Persephone property mm -hmm. um, and my mom HB who will be joining us shortly is um, she she <laughs> she took this photo so She's and she took all the photos in a nostalgia series that's right oh my god I'm thinking it's like closed and oh, I was like <laughs> Okay, well, that's the sign I should just start pouring. <laughs> Let's put, make the bottle slightly more empty. There you go. Just okay, so, you know. Mm -hmm. Hi, all. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Chin, chin. I'm going to take a um, <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we're sitting here because I've been staring at the cheese, so I got here, you know, before we started to, you know, film, and I've been staring at the cheese. Well, so I'm very, very excited to eat some. In a minute. So this blend, yeah, we, we're talk talking about, this about Malbec. So it's um, 62% Malbec. I'm all Cab Sauv, like 35% Cab Sauv and Cabernet Sauvignon and a little bit of Petit Verdot. That's right. And it's um, primarily from our Persephone Vineyard, although we do grow um, those bridles here in Rutherford as well. So we get to kind of play around and uh, make the wine that I think will taste the most delicious. We don't have any 
specific, like it must come from a specific vineyard, it is nice to be able to mm -hmm. uh, play and uh, yeah, put things together. So um, yeah, this is fun. So what I like about the nostalgia series is that you, that we, I do get to play. Like I, right. you know, we come up with these fun little names and kind of a. There was no direction we, we on name, what we name all of the vineyards. Um, or these wines after something with the vineyard, one of the photos. So we'll come up with the title after we pick the photo. We'll always pick the photo first. Pick the photo yeah. first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I basically made the wine first. Yeah, you made the wine first. Then we're like, and I'm like what, okay, what would go with this? <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, well, it's true. It's like, yeah. In my world, I call them fun wine. Like the nostalgia <laughs> series is basically fun yeah. wine through one through seven. Right. And so I'm like, oh, so I know like the old Victorian is fun one. And fun <laughs> two is the farm. And I have these... <laughs> Ooh. Just I'm like I'm the getting farm a little window is, into have, our world I, of yeah. The farm is one of my very good oh, friends. So. Favorite, favorite, favorite wines. We just did a She's vertical. Obsessed with it. Last night I hadn't done a vertical long time. Of so the farm, fourteen through Which the San Giovese based. Yes, blend. We also grow that too. But this yeah. is about Malbec and yeah. how delicious <laughs> Malbec is. I think I fell in love live. And how good it's going to go with Manchego. So keep yes, talking. Okay. I'm going to no, taste well, while Malbec we. Malbec thing. You know, when I was lucky enough to well, work in Chile, but got to visit Argentina. And um, there's very Malbec base there and really developed, I mean, like even more of an appreciation and a love of Malbec. And so um, when I came to Peugeot, uh, there wasn't any Malbec planted here. And so I was able to, um, Mr. Peugeot, Lisa's dad, um, was like, what would you like to plant? And I wanted to plant, um, make sure that we had all five of the main red Bordeaux varietals here in Rutherford. So I was able to plant some Sweet Bordeaux and Malbec. And then now we have it in our test vineyard as well. And so, um, yeah, so actually not Persephone, so Tess. Yeah. And, and I think it's delicious. Well, they're next to each other, so. They are, well, yeah. <laughs> you, originally, they were one piece of property, but you bought Persephone first, and then uh, it's true. 20 years we, later. We completed the, the, the square. Yes. The giant square. We were able to buy it. It was like, what, like, like 20 years later? Mm -hmm. About 20 years later, I was able to purchase the last bit. But we do have it's a different exciting. vineyard name, um, simply because it, it, Keiju's planted Mm -hmm. Persephone started off with like raw land and, and Tess had some vineyards planted, but we've also gone in and redeveloped and planted some new stuff. So it's kind of so fun. Can you tell me why is Malbec so jammy? Oh, because big, big, <laughs> delicious. Is it because they're big <laughs> berries <laughs> that are going to like yes. triple um, in size to this? I would say like not all that, all, all, not double. all Malbec is um, jammy per se. I put it in my glass. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> I double, I double dog dare you to eat one of those grapes. Oh my, okay, well, okay, I'll, I'll eat one of the ones that are kind of more purpley. Yeah. This one looks like it's kind of ready, see? Uh-huh, uh I did it's, that the other day. I know. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Still a little sour? Sorry, like, I literally... It I just, looks ready! I did this in Sauvignon Blanc Vineyard a couple days ago, and I was like, oh, oh you're soft and squishy, like, you should taste delicious. And I'm like, it made my eyes tear up. It was like, was so, it was like so very, very sour and acidic. And I mean, it was, it will be eventually really, the sugar development is like just starting. So part of the Verasian process is the sugar development and right and seed development and all of those processes. So um, yeah. without getting boring, it's just, it doesn't have the sugar level yet. So. Um, thank you for. I don't for know if you guys were entertained, but I was secretly. You wanted me to get. You wanted to like. Wanted you wanted when I eat spicy food like tear up really dramatically. Yeah, I'm like uh huh. This is just today. a come off no. Um, so <laughs> but, I mean, so yeah. Malbec isn't always. So Malbec <laughs> is not always jammy, but it it really is a big great varietal. And so in comparison to Cabernet Sauvignon, which would be like, um, for example, like the difference between like maybe the pinky and Malbec would be like my thumb, and neither one be big, but like. There's a very big difference, and so with Malbec, um, the skin to pulp ratio is much different than, so in Cabernet, there's going to be more skin to pulp ratio than there would be for Malbec. Malbec has got, the, the skin ah, yeah. was a lot more, there's more pulp, more juice. Like therefore, Zinfandel grapes, they're like also like that. Yes, okay. like Zinfandel. So you get that kind of concept. So there is um, less tannins, uh -huh. so it's softer. Um, so I could see the perception of jammy. Jamminess can come from either like extra ripe, um, well, whether it's a little like we leave it on the vine a little bit longer so there's more sugar involved. Right. I'm trying to, yeah. To me, this is not super jam jammy. Like, I no. wouldn't go, oh, this is a jammy wine. But I know the Malbec definitely has uh, more so than some of the other wines that you make. So that was yeah. kind of where and I was going with that. And, um, and delicate. And mm -hmm. But it's very. A little refined, but it's got good acidity. But I like about the Malbec, it, it, because of the skin to pulp ratio, if you will, um, is. That it is not, it's easier to drink. It is very Way friendly. Easier to drink. Yeah. Wait till we get, yeah. So. Really delicious. 
and it goes green. So you're supposed while, to be. So that's good. For those of you that got the cheese pairings, we have um, um, the Manchango is to go with this wine, and it is really good. I'm gonna try it. It's a little bit. Yeah, you should definitely try it. It's a little nutty. And um, Chef Nick, who's our chef here at Peju, he's fabulous. He's amazing. Way. And so yeah, he, this was his recommendation to go with this wine. And yeah, he picks oh. all the cheeses. So if you come here, we sometimes do cheese pairings too. So, um, but we do really, a lot of things with Chef Nick. I know. I did my very first with him. Um, food and wine tasting in the vineyard. We do it in the kitchen, and it's all just like casual. It's work, right? So there was a will come and I. Had a friend visiting from out of town, and we went and did the tasting in the vineyard. This and past we did, weekend, yeah, and you then did we did that. the lunch, and it was it was fabulous. I'm like, I really can't wait to come back and bring some. Like, I need someone to come visit me. <laughs> I need an excuse to come and do this again for like I want to do dinner. Anyone brave enough to hop on a plane? Yet? Yeah, come please. You've been this long. Anybody? Anybody? Um, it was so fabulous, and so it was. I mean, like, honestly, it was like. I didn't feel like I was. I worked here. It felt like it was just a fabulous, like going to a right. nice restaurant, but in a beautiful environment. It was fantastic. Uh, good. Yeah. Well, I think we have a question. Oh, here. we do have a question. So um, the question is: I typically think of Malbec as a bit peppery. This wine is very smooth. Mm. Is this due to the blend with Cab and Petit Verdot? Mm. It's a probably. That's so it's interesting. So I would say if you're thinking of Malbec from Argentina, um, maybe the Malbecs tend to be maybe a little bit more peppery in the style. Um, but for California Malbecs, I don't, I mean, like, maybe peppery characters can be in there, but I don't really find so much of the pepper characteristic in Malbec from California. I find more of that, um, maybe in Syrahs. Um, and I think that it is, has a lot to do with Syrah in California. Syrah in California, correct. And so I think it does have to do with, like, when, when we pick, where it's grown, and the blending. Right. Like, blending can absolutely, you know. That's the fun thing about putting blends together is that you can kind of shift. It's cooking, right? So you can kind of shift um, something from one direction to another simply by using certain spices or certain things. Winemaking is exactly the same way. Well, maybe not exactly, but pretty darn close. Exactly. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. oh. Josh is tasting along with the 15 making of a vineyard, and he says it is divine. Oh, oh thank you, Josh. Josh. Appreciate that. Appreciate Much it. Appreciated. Josh, if you think it's divine, you should come out here, and we'll do a... Uh, <laughs> well, dinner in the Ma vineyard, right? Malbec and uh -huh. dinner. <laughs> yes. A really great question because it's used all the time in describing wine. What does jammy mean? Ah, I like that. Well, what does it mean to you? Because well, you're the one, I you're know, the one I, that used it. I know, and it, it wasn't exactly what I meant. That's the best part. So my favorite thing when I went to Sarah one day and I was like, why does this wine, it was a different wine, of course. I said, why does this taste like olive? And she goes, well, that's not traditionally in this wine. Because there are certain flavors, she taught me this, so certain, no. I'm probably going to say this wrong. No, no. So um, there are certain flavor profiles that exist in every wine varietal, right? That are kind of like, you just know those things you kind of find, those, those mm -hmm. smells, tastes, blah, blah, blah. But then she said to me, this was the best part, because I've always been made to feel stupid by a lot of people. And so she She's did not, not stupid, do this. by the way. Not stupid. <laughs> but it was, she, you said, well, what... What is it that makes it you think it is olive? Okay, yeah. Yeah, and just kind of like, what say, is it like, that yeah. made me think it was jammy? I would say that. <laughs> because it is true, because people, and I've used that over the years, because people have said to me words and things. Would it, to me, this is jammy, because it's jammy, because it's not, it's juicier than most more, most of the wines we make here. Okay, I would, and I would say, like, yes. I think that you mean that it doesn't have, like, as much tannins. Yes. We, knowing, knowing Lisa, but it's I not do, truly what I would classify no. as jammy because a lot of times jammy yes. to me. So if I were to use the word jammy, and I didn't use this, I'm just kidding. Like, no. Um, is to me like jammy would be I would like mostly associate that with like a big Zinfandel that's got a little bit sweetness to it. Agree. Like a little something that like reminds you of jam. It's you taste it and you're like it's got a little sweetness. It's pretty. It's good, but maybe yeah. not cloying, um, but it could be. You know, it's maybe a little yeah, bit too in the other direction. direction. Right. Yeah. But what Lisa is saying about, um, the food, like, knowing what your taste buds, like whether something's olive or jammy, her word, her word choice using jammy might be different if you live in an area where jam maybe is more tart. And you have, like, wild plums that have, uh -huh. like, you know, crazy Which is what acidity. I eat. I don't have a lot of sugary jams. Right. So, I mean, like, it's so... So, for me, it tastes very... Jammy, because um, maybe what your perception... Mm -hmm. You and I can eat jam together because I don't really like the super sweet <laughs> jams as well. But it really is dependent because not everybody, for example, knows what, um, you know, like, oh my God, I'm trying to think of a, 
know, Logan Berry or oh, right. a certain like, like fruit. Like when do you get those opportunities to try strange fruits? Different fruit. And then we, you know, we use like guayaba and I. Like, yeah. we're going to both. I'm like, oh, we know that. Oh, guayaba and I. Yeah, I like, use that one. Use that, but like not everybody has that opportunity. So maybe a word choice for that one would be like more passion fruit or tropical, right? So, you know, and then Logan Berry tastes different no, than a No, it's very distinctive. Berry. Peach and apricot okay, mixed well, together. Just, okay, so. That was for me. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> right now, so I'm just. That's okay. But yeah, so whatever the fruit is and that association, because yes. no matter where you live in the world, we have different flavor profiles that like, you yeah. know, mean Wait, something. Oh, 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 question, that, oh question. All right. <laughs> or questions. We've got lots of hands waving behind us. What are some of the differences in growing Malbec for, say, Cab or other reds? Do you have to treat it differently? Or? We do. We do. I mean, so that's the nice, isn't that the fun thing about, it's like, you have to grow your, even your tomatoes. I don't know. People, it's gardening. Everybody's got a quarantine garden. This thing oh, yeah. Like. Um, Absolutely. So growing all the different varietals require um, different touch points. We have, you can't grow everything the same. I use this analogy with the Cab Franc all the time and had to have a conversation of, like, if you treated everything like Cabernet, then it would be like a really a disservice to the grapes out there. So um, without going into lots of detail, mm -hmm. the answer, the short answer is yes, they are treated differently because um, Malbec is an earlier ripening grape than Cabernet Sauvignon. Cabernet Sauvignon is a later grape, and so therefore just in that tiny one detail uh, mm -hmm. has to be treated different. It is a much bigger, and you can't really tell here, but a much bigger cluster, So in a, which would be fun actually in another six weeks right before harvest we could do a little we'll bring we one do out. a little something where we can, can show we preserve the this difference in, <laughs> we could try we put it in the freezer yeah, put in the see freezer. What oh let's do, yeah put it in the freezer it'll be fine it'll be an experiment yeah we'll see what happens <laughs> and we'll bring it back out yeah. um but because the clusters are so i mean they are ginormous they are one of the biggest clusters that we of grapes um, and this is what this is called a cluster of grapes you guys probably know that but just in case you don't oh and then this right here this little piece it's baby right now but um later on when it's bigger it will be it's called a wing or sometimes shoulders. So anyway, um, so because it's so much bigger, we have to go through and they, as they grow, if they are too um, bunched up together, um, they can have issues of um, either they won't ripen together, or they can get some rot. So we have to make sure that they're separate and kept apart. So yeah, I mean, the long story short. All right. And I can talk a lot I know. about Well, we, we got to move on to the next wine. Okay, which so, one I'm super excited about because. Wine, right, because. I have well, a dump bucket, I guess that means I'm the jug. dump bucket. Or use this glass. Mm. Oh, or These that. These tastings are dangerous. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. So this so, is. Yeah, go ahead. Talk. Well, this is our <laughs> sketches. It's our sketches, and um, I think this is a really like this is a very sweet and wonderful little project that we've started a few years back, where we wanted your mom yeah. to come together and put together a group. We wanted her to come in and paint different um, labels, basically different projects. Right. Uh, for all the different labels. We've done the same one. I'm hoping that we can do like a series at some point with the different um, different paintings that she has. Right. So we're going to have HB come join us. Yeah, she's right here. She's oh, right here. Come join us. Come all, uh, all right. You are behind us? You are. <laughs> come come join us. We have, wine, we have wine for you. Oh, and all right. It is a Merlot-based wine because HB loves Merlot. And if you've joined us at all, Previously, then you will know that, and so wait. First, I want to point out. So this is HB. Yes. And then right behind her, wait. Look at the label, and look, we have the original <laughs> watercolor is on the label that HB did. So that that was kind of cool. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Right. Right. Makes well, sense. Hi, everybody. I am HB, also known as Lisa's mom. <laughs> so sketches. Sketches, yes, it's good yeah. stuff. Merlot based blend. You yeah. always wanted to do a Merlot based blend. Yeah. yeah. I think of Merlot, I think of HB. You know, we put a little something together. It's yeah, delicious. Well, Merlot goes with everything. That's right. <laughs> it really yeah. does. And what about um so why did you wanna why did you wanna put your watercolor on this blend? Well, I've always been very modest. I love uh, painting, but I'm not very good at it, but I love <laughs> doing it. <laughs> So one of uh, Mark in an apartment came up with a big idea. I said, we should feature your artwork and your kids' artwork every year. Well, the first year. Wait, wait, I, Sarah's <laughs> saying it's her idea. No, it was my idea. It was your it was idea. idea. <laughs> you know, Sarah's well, just trying to keep you busy, HB. <laughs> she's, she's full of ideas. Oh, well. About Probably too many, yes. Sarah is super artistic. I'm also, I, but I also enjoy the process more than yeah, I'm really good. Yeah. The reason why I went into well, wine and not 
Art. Okay. <laughs> right. So we said I said on the name of sketches because I'm not a painter. So sketches one, 2013. I've been waiting for the second sketches has never appeared. I know. Where are they? <laughs> well, yeah. We, where we, is we, it? We know you have. I them. thought you were gonna make something else. Well, she oh, had. Well. She already had these. <laughs> Second sketches. Oh, oh, I like it. Uh, Where but, is that? That's not the same barn, is it? No, no. A different barn. Th this is Peugeot Barn. Uh, this is in uh, Rutherford um, Crossroads. This it looks like it's still in production here. You have like yes. a drawing in there. She hasn't uh, finished, she hasn't finished like, uh, it. I got stuck on the red truck. <laughs> Uh, that's always parked by the red barn. That's true. In the back behind the winery. So that was just, but this is back <laughs> in 2016. So, I like but it. maybe the next one would, by the time I finish this one, who knows? <laughs> maybe Sarah will do one. Or maybe. Oh, oh. oh, I, oh well, well, I don't know. No, this is an HP sketches series, so I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I know you have some more. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> All we, right. we know that you have stuff. Okay, put pressure on me and I will finish it maybe this year. We should do a sip and paint. Oh, with yeah, HP. let's do that. Ooh. Yeah. I like that idea. We, did we could do, do that we, in a vineyard. We did one just fun. like the group with the company. But that would be really yeah, fun. fun. We did do us. a sip and paint. We should do that. That would be super fun. And you have one of your paintings, and then we can have someone come in. We won't make you do the thing. Anyway, we'll talk about it. I think we oh, right. have fun. I don't know if anybody else is interested, but I'm willing to do that. And then I'd like to have dinner and dinner after. All right. Dinner. So, Chef, Chef Nick. Chef Nick, yeah. Please, please feed us. So yeah. maybe if I promise on camera to finish, yeah. I will. Yeah. Oh, that'll yeah, get you going? So, uh, huh? Well, we could have, you know what? I know that you have, like a, you have lots of different paintings we could come up with a collage yeah. of them and maybe like different we, we could come yeah. up we could get artistic all right yeah. another question <laughs> good question and i think there are going to be multiple answers oh boy but the question was how do you come up with ideas like sketches as a series of lines or the nostalgia series or is well, it a little wine <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, up there and the, the label series i mean the painting series with her, I came up with a name. I came up with a nostalgia series because um, I'm the historian. I'm the one who has been mm -hmm. taking pictures for all my life from my kids and my husband. She's very and good. You never really think they're important, but 30 years, 40 years later, you say, wow, this is history. It's and you are, she, you want a photo with HB. HB takes really yeah. great photos. Mm. Jonah, you are very she's the, she has an she's eye the unofficial for photographer yeah. for the Napa Valley Vintners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one day there will be a book. So. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You heard it here first, people. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I think you should have a little piece of cheese or a little and a knife. Yeah. So our recommendation with this wine was the Fellow Jack. Well, we need to wine. talk oh, about okay. wine. I, uh, wine, mm. they're the expert. Not, I'm not the expert. I'm talking about wine. I'm talking about cheese. But there's <laughs> one, one thing I like to share with people. I learned about wine. Um, and years ago, I didn't drink wine and I didn't like olives. And one day I tasted an olive with Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I like olives. Yeah. Well, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I only say that because I feel like it was after glass. Yeah, Just right? Because I was like, I feel like an olive would make wine taste No. Uh, but it does, though, but, but I could see because maybe the cab that you had yeah. wasn't great, but it, it ha sometimes they have okay. an olive taste to it, yeah. so I could see it counter on. It was a good pairing for me. Yeah. 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 So, anyway, i leave you with that. <laughs> oh, you don't have to leave us. Wait, wait. No. I'm going to taste this. I'm going to see what well, it is. Okay. I'm uh, going to do, oh, okay, I'll do, I mean, I'll do olive and um, I mean, just a Merlot cab. Mm-hmm. Well, these are those not very um, sharp olives. What are they called again? The, um, those apple-shaped ones. Starts no, with a C. The yeah, camera. Castellano. Oh, Castellano you can olives. Just say it. You Thank you. Thank you. Castellano. The one that starts with a C. Castellano olives. Yeah, they're not oh, as um. No, but they're good. Yeah, they're the salt is always a little bit less. They're not as sharp. But it makes it like even like mm -hmm. more sweet and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. The, the yeah. moral of the story, if you don't like olives. Actually, I have to say, I think it actually makes the wine taste even better. Yeah, it does. It's actually quite good. <laughs> like, hold on. Do you guys have Mom, some in I think, I think you got this. We should actually, this, like, someone take notes. Oh, really yeah. good pairing with... Castellano Yeah, olives. that's a really, it's a nice pairing. 
<laughs> we're both surprised. I love this. Well, <laughs> you know what? We can still get surprised. I mean, it doesn't. It's no, nice. but that's the best thing about wine, in my right, opinion. The fact that we can. Well, no, it's like that. you're always. It's always changing. You're always learning. You're always evolving. You're never going to taste the same thing twice. So even if it's something that you really like. For me, you go back and taste it weeks later, and it, it's slightly different. It's not the exact same thing, and I love that about wine. Well, and wine is constantly evolving. Yeah. And think about, like, on our taste buds, depending on how how long you slept last night, what you eat for breakfast. Like, all of those different things also change how we Or, like, you say, I have to take allergy, allergy stuff all yeah. the time for my allergies in the spring, and I can't taste wine at all because it makes every wine taste bad. It tastes it's, terrible. I, if I get allergies, the same thing. I try to do, like, I come in, and yeah. I, I really can't. So if I'm, if it's allergy season and something bothers me, I can't take an, I can't take a allergy medicine because stuff tastes terrible. Mm -hmm. And and I know that if I eat something, and I also have to be in a good mood when I put blends together, which oh, I yeah. actually never schedule I'm anything all, stressful before blending. Well, though that's a Tony, mm -hmm. you're listening. Remember, because <laughs> I would be like, I'm like, you'd have to like want a meeting about something, and I'd be like, like something really I'm, I'm blending. I'm like, by the way, I'm blending right now. Just oh, my eye. so I get like a little reprieve. This is emotional for me. I'm like, I, whatever that hard conversation you want to have, we can't have it right now because I'm in the middle of blending. Because I do believe, and I, I mean this, that chefing is the same. Yeah, it's I'm like it's it's a it's an emotional thing, and it's like um, it needs to be like cooking, like right? it needs to be made with love, right? So for me, I have to be in a happy, good place to put blends together. We haven't talked about blending, but that really is like where yeah. for me, if I'm not in a good place, like the wine doesn't taste as good. Yeah, you want to be like in a good loving place. Yes. Do you do any blending to music? Ooh. Oh, wow. Well, Are you like a plant? You know, like oh, how people in the seventies used like to play, like, yeah, they play um, music for their plants. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I probably blend sometimes. So I am one of those people. I like quiet. Um, I, I really do. I like I like things really quiet, but I also listen, but I also love music. So I think I probably do both. It's really dependent. I think for me, maybe the finishing touches could be done with music, but otherwise, I just, yeah, I really think about. Because you like, really I, have to concentrate. Yeah, like, I'm like I like things. I mean, she said it's twenty twenty thing twenty glasses with like slight very slight differences in front of you. I would sometimes. get distracted. One I'd one. probably be like, oh, here's the beat. I'm going to put in a few more things or something, and then I taste it later. I'm like, what was that? And it would be a compilation of, like, you know, all the different crazy music that I was listening to. Maybe that's not good. But I do like listening to music. I like listening to music when we're making the wine from Harvest. There's music playing all the time. Yeah. Um, and I do, but, yeah, it's when I put plants of interest. That's a good question because I never really thought about it. I do. I think things, I'm it's quiet. I'm, I get, with, it's, when I'm concentrating really hard, I can't have music, but otherwise I really like it. Yeah, me too. It's like oh, anything huh. that takes a lot of my focus because it'll take my focus away because I get yeah. into the music. I'm like, yeah, I'm like the same thing. Yeah, whatever it's it is. Interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. So for better or for worse, I, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I it's feel like, interesting. which leads me into, I feel like we need a music intro every time we start. We should have a music <laughs> intro. All right. I'm for those music back. people out there. <laughs> If you're sitting at home and you need something to do, we can use, <laughs> we can use a little help on that end because we yeah. have thought about, but it'd be fun. We, we also thought about like putting different, want, we've tried this a little bit the other day, of, like different blends with different music, music types, different things. So it'd be Would fun, it like, taste different if you had different music ooh, on? Ooh, if we did it blind. Ooh, ooh blind yeah. tasting. blind tasting. That would be fun. But would it all taste I mean, different? Malbec probably it would be like Argentinian, some like little, <laughs> you know, flamenco or something, salsa. What about the 50-50? Right. Oh, no, no? Okay. Yeah, so. I, well, I'm going to answer for you. If we're going to put on some, like, Italian music for my mom. Oh, yeah. Oh, she was. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. I like that. Yeah. Like that. So there's a, there's a lot of, uh, you know, music in our house that was world-based. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Up. I know that jazz is not a favorite, but <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's funny. So yeah, I'm like, I'm a mall, so, but but I like Italian too. Yeah, yeah. so many things. It's all good music. But anyways, okay. Well, we have all this awesome wine, and um, I know there's we have a lot left in the bottle. We're going to drink it. I hope you guys are too. Lots yeah, left. I'm like, we're I'd drink like it. To, yeah, your mom didn't get to taste that. You yeah, have to drink that's that next. Part. She gets to drink that next. But um, so we're gonna be doing this again next Thursday. Yeah. Um, we're doing part of the stained glass series. That's right. I can't That's remember kind of which two, but it's only two out of the five stained glass series. Do I yeah. have that correct? There are five. There are five. And I don't so embarrassing. I'm either. so out of but it. I'm sure they're going to be delicious. They're going to be delicious, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and then we're definitely going to be doing, oh, wait, there's a question, I think, on, on voice. Let's, is there a question? Hey, Sarah and Lisa and, and Lisa's mom, which is, I guess, 
Yeah. You were here five years ago. Thanks. Oh, yeah. So um, we ended up, uh, well, we were going to have a trip to California, but that's not happening now. So uh, yeah. we're not going to be virtually. Uh, so, AC, we were wondering, how did you end up in Rutherford, California? Tell us your story. How did you end up in Rutherford, California? How did oh. you end up here? Oh, you want to tell your version? I can tell mine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she doesn't I'm, just te- do I'm teasing her. Yeah, I know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. She her was bad by the <laughs> Yeah, well. Uh, I am known to be very truthful. I only, I only <laughs> stick to the truth. <laughs> Ideally, you're supposed to say, oh, I always wanted to go to the wine country and become a winemaker. <laughs> no. <laughs> my, uh, my husband had a midlife crisis. <laughs> And he said, I am going to move to the Napa Valley. And I said, whoa. <laughs> My children were very small, two and six, but he prevailed. Uh, once we were here, I was very, very happy because uh, living in LA, we were left up in, you know, in, um, up in the hills with all those crazy movie stars and <laughs> <laughs> so I was always worried about my kids. So living here was uh, was a blessing. But you know, it took me. Yeah, I don't know. It took me <laughs> a whole good year to get used to being here. Only but, one. Uh, only one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> She loves so, it though. She everybody, guys write in. I mean, yeah. you know what? it's amazing. And, and, and here in the valley, everybody knows HB. Like, I yeah. mean, you can go no matter where you go. You go to an event, and she's loved. And I mean, like you would. I mean, you wouldn't have had that necessarily in LA. I mean, in here, you've no, been embraced. No, no. And... But you know, I'm, I'm I'm adverse to change because I, like I said, I was a twice immigrant, and I had it moving. It has nothing to do with Napa or whatever. So, but. It, it's for the best. I love the wine business. Um, it's great. We have great customers, and they, I mean... It's... She's the people person out of my parents. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, who, who doesn't love Napa Valley or winemakers? They love me. I say, oh, well, I feel great. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so I really appreciate it. I mean, we love all our customers, and yeah, I'm happy to be here now. <laughs> And if you're lucky and you do make it to Napa Valley one day, because I know you're going to, um, you know, coming from Florida, I realize now is not the time, but HB will be in the garden sometimes on the weekends. you got to come early, though. She's <laughs> always out in the gardens, and our gardens are amazing. And she's yeah. out there. I mean, like, yeah. if you've been here before, I mean, like, legit, it's not, I mean, we have a gardening team that's, like, amazing and great. This one's out there with her basket and her clippers and her gloves. And she's doing tons of work. She's always going in and checking and really, truly. Well, now I don't even see her doing that as much. Now we have the chef's garden, which is right across from the winery crush pad where we crush all the grapes. And she's out there like, oh, well, look at the cucumbers and the zucchini and the peppers and all the things we grow. And she's just taking all the winery food. It's great. Well, she's taking it and then she's (laughs) She's giving it to people. She's passing it along. She'd be like, do you want a cucumber? And I'm like, well, why, yes, I do want a ginormous cucumber. I'm like, why not? It's, you know, yeah. like the different ones, the different varietals. Yeah. And, yeah. and everybody appreciates it because yeah. we just don't. So anyway, all <laughs> anyway, of you out talking. there, I hope you can visit soon. Yeah. So. yeah we but show. we really appreciate that you're joining us virtually. Yes. And um, I think yeah. we probably, if there's no more questions, we could sign off and say, um, we can't wait to see you next week. Yeah. And we're going to continue some of these in August as well. We haven't set the schedule or the wines yet. If you have any ideas or questions or anything yeah, no that you would like to see content, you can email us. You can Instagram us, Facebook us, yeah. however you want to reach us. We're available. Yeah. We'd yeah. love to know your and feedback. And we do love the questions and the feedback. And yeah. honestly, like whatever it is, positive, negative, we, we would like that. And um, we want to do better and we want to provide you whoever's out there like with any kind of information you want and um we're thankful that everybody's right. logging in and, and, and approachable like our wines <laughs> <laughs> i'm just doing this because oh. we have to do you know we have to do a uh. goodbye cheers thanks guys we well, so yeah. appreciate yeah. it have an awesome yeah. day yes yeah. thank you thirsty thursday thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you.